Hi, everyone. My name is JP, and I'm a product manager working on the Widgets platform. Today, I'm here to talk to you about Windows 11 Widgets. For this first segment, I will show you where you can find widgets and what they're capable of doing. If you hover over the bottom left of your screen on the Widgets bar, you'll be able to open up the Widgets board. And you can also access the Widgets board by using the Windows plus W shortcut. Here, you'll find the widgets that you have pinned to the Widgets board. And you can also find at the top right, the Widget Picker. The Widget Picker will allow you to specify which widgets you want shown on the Widgets board. Here's an example of the Xbox Game Pass widget. You can see it shows different games that are available at, as part of the Xbox Game Pass. And we can also change the size of the widget, medium and large size. We can also rearrange it to be on a different place on the Widgets board. In this upcoming segment, I'll walk you through the steps to implementing your widget. There are three high-level steps to implementing your widget. The first step is to design the UI for the widget, and this is done using adaptive cards. The second step is to implement the iWidget provider interface, and this will define the methods used to communicate with the widgets board. And finally, the last step is to register your widget, and these changes are done in the AppX manifest. In this slide, we can see on the left side, we have the UI for our widget. On the middle, we have the steps for communicating with your widget, with your app. And then on the right side, we have the application. For the first step, we have gone ahead and implemented the UI for our widget. This is how the widget will look like. For the second step, we implement the six methods used to communicate with the widgets board. These are create widget, delete widget, on action invoked, on widget context changed, and activate and deactivate. Uh, these communicate your app with the widgets board. And then the final step is to register your widget with the system in order for it to display on the widgets board. Now we'll go ahead and walk you through how you can create the UI for your widget using the Adaptive Cards Designer. In the designer, you will find different card elements that you can drag and drop into your widget. And here for this demo, I've gone ahead and created a simple counting widget that will update a counting variable with some log logic that you add into your app. If we go ahead and click preview mode, we can see that the Adaptive Cards Designer is mimicking the widgets board, and it's showing you the widget as it would look on the widgets board. We can find the card payload, which indicates the template for your, for your widget at the bottom left of the Adaptive Cards Designer. Now that we have the UI created for our widget, I'm going to talk about the methods that are required to communicate with the widgets board. If we head over to our project, this is a C-sharp console application that will implement the iWidget provider interface with the six methods that we mentioned previously. For the first method, we have the create widget method. This is called anytime the user pins the widget using the widget picker. Then we have the delete widget, which is called anytime the user removes a widget from the widgets board. We have on action invoked, which is called anytime the user takes an action on the widget, such as in our example, incrementing the counter. Up next, we have the on widget context changed method. And this one is called anytime the user switches the size for the widget. We also have the update widget method, which is called anytime there's new information that your application would want to pass to the widget, or if the user requests new information via an action or another medium with your application. Finally, we have the activate and deactivate methods. These are called when the widgets board is interested or not interested in receiving updates from your widget. And this covers the iWidget provider interface, which is the second step in creating your widget. Now that I have shown you how to implement the iWidget provider interface, we'll talk about the last step, which is registering your widget. This happens in your Apex manifest, and you will need to specify properties for your widget, such as the definition, the display name, descriptions, and you will also need to include assets for your widget. In this example, we have included a folder, which is provider assets, and we have included both screenshots and icons for our widget. We can also see that in the counting widget, we have added capabilities for small, medium, and large sizes. 
Another important part of the Apex manifest is the GUID, which is what your widget will use with the system to register with the widgets board. Here, we can see it used in two different places. Now that we have made the changes in our Apex manifest, we can test our widget by the open up the widgets board, head over to the widgets picker, and we can now see widgets we have implemented as part of this demo. We will go ahead and pin the weather widget first. And this will open up a console window since this is a C-sharp console application. We'll head back into the widgets board. And we are now able to see the weather widget. Now let's test the counting widget. Head back to the widget picker. Go in and pin the counting widget. And we are also able to see the counting widget. We can refresh the widgets board to update the content. And we can also test the action on our widget by hitting the increment button. As you can see, the widget is working as intended. And that wraps up this demo. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to learn more about widgets, you can always check out our documentation where you can find design guidelines and also development guidelines. You will be able to find all the requirements that your app needs to meet in order to enable third-party widgets. If you have any feedback you would like to submit, we also have an email alias in our documentation. And you can report any issues in the Windows App SDK repository. We're very excited to open up the widgets board to third party developers. And if you have any cool widgets you would like to share, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Thank you.